I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on truthy and falsy values you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So what are truthy and falsy values? JavaScript automatically converts non-Boolean values to true or false in Boolean contexts. Now, this is a bit of a strange concept to get your head around. So I'm going to explain this through an analogy of a teacher taking roll call at the start of the day. We'll first look at when a student is present. So the teacher asks, Jon Snow, are you present? And this question is a Boolean context. The answer is either true or false. That is, the student is there or they are not there. So let's say Jon Snow is present and he responds, yes. We could think of yes as a string. It's not like Jon Snow is responding, Boolean true. He's using language to say, yes, I am present. So if the student says anything, they are present. So in terms of the student being present, thinking of this as a Boolean context, this is true, they are present. But once again, they didn't respond Boolean true, they responded yes. Looking at now when a student isn't present, if the teacher asks Jamie Lannister, are you present? Again, this is a Boolean context. And if Jamie isn't present, there is no response. It's kind of like we're getting back undefined. Because Jamie isn't present, it's not like he's shouting Boolean false. He just isn't there. And we can think of this as undefined. So no response means they are not present. And in JavaScript terms, it's like we're getting back false. So inside a Boolean context, values can have this inherent true or false nature, which we call truthy or falsy. A string is a truthy value and undefined is a falsy value. So let's now take a look at all the different truthy and falsy values. Truthy values are those that represent an actual value, while falsy values represents the absence of a value. Let's look at the truthy values first. We have Boolean true. We have numbers other than zero, like 23. We have a non-empty string, like the string Daniel. These next two truthy values we will learn about later, but for the purpose of this video, I do want everything on this slide, so you have an easy reference point for truthy and falsy values. So the first one we will learn later are arrays, which look like this, and can also include an empty array. Objects are also truthy values, which look like this, and an empty object is also a truthy value. Don't worry about arrays and objects right now, we will be learning them in much more detail later on. For falsy values, we have boolean false, we have the number zero, we have an empty string, we have null, we have undefined, and we have not a number, NAN. So these are our falsy values. So the big question you're going to have now are where truthy and falsy values are useful. They're very useful in two circumstances. Let's take a look at the first one. Truthy and falsy values are useful in situations where you need to determine the presence or absence of a value in a Boolean context. The Boolean context we've come across so far is inside if statements. So looking at this example here, we have if not email, console.log enter your email address. Inside out parentheses of the if statement, we have a Boolean context. Now, the reason truthy and falsy values are very helpful here is because we're just checking if there is a value for email. If there is a value for email, we won't execute the console.log, enter email address. But if email doesn't have a value, the console.log will run. You could picture this code being used on something like a sign-up form, where a user is required to enter an email address. So let's first look at the case when the email is present. We would have a variable like let email equal daniel at gmail.com, which is a string. Now a string is a truthy value. So let's run through what will happen step by step. Inside our condition, email is going to be replaced with the string daniel at gmail.com. Now because we're inside a Boolean context, that is the condition of the if statement, daniel at gmail.com is converted to true because it is a truthy value. Now not true is equal to false. And because we have false inside our condition, the code block won't run. Let's now look at the case where the email is absent. It would be something like let email, where the variable email has been declared but has no value. If you were to try access the value of email inside the console, you would get back undefined. And undefined is a falsy value. So let's walk through this case step by step. We originally had not email in the condition, so now we have not undefined. Inside this Boolean context, undefined is a falsy value. So this is the same as not false. Evaluating not false, we get true. So because we have true inside our if statement condition, the code block will run. Console.log, enter your email address. 
which makes sense because email has no value. So the user would be required to enter their email address. So let's go play around with this inside VS Code. I've gone ahead and created an index.html file and linked a script.js file, which is currently empty. For this example, we're going to be using truthy and falsy values when applying a coupon code at a checkout. I'm going to declare a variable, let coupon equal new year 20, which is a special coupon for 20% off during the new year period. We'll then grab our if keyword, and I'm going to put in here coupon. Grabbing our curly brackets. Inside this first code block, I'm going to grab console.log. I'm going to grab our template literals, and I'm going to write applying coupon code and then grabbing our dollar signs and curly brackets, I'm gonna add in the value of coupon. I'll then have an else statement. And inside this code block, I'm gonna write console.log and just use a regular string to write no coupon entered. All right, so let's go check this out in the console. So you can see we're outputting applying coupon code new year 20. Now the reason that's running is because our value for coupon is a string. So what's happening is inside this if statement, we have the string new year 20, and a string is a truthy value. So inside the condition, which is a Boolean context, this is converted to true because a string is a truthy value, which means that this block of code will run. All right, putting it back to coupon. Let's say the user hadn't entered a coupon. We would have something like this, where the variable coupon exists, but there is no value for it. If I'd now try access coupon in the console, I get back undefined. So what's happening here is that the value of a coupon is undefined, we know undefined is a falsy value, which means this code block won't run, which then means the else statement will run as it is a catch all. So if I refresh, you'll see we get no coupon entered. So truthy and falsy values are really helpful in determining the presence or absence of a value in a Boolean context like an if statement. So let's now take a look at the second case of where truthy and falsy values are useful. Truthy and falsy values allow us to write simpler conditional checks without directly comparing to true or false. All right, that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's break it down. Let's say we had this code here, which is checking if a user is an admin. And if they are an admin, we're gonna grant them access to the admin panel of the web application. Now, up until now, we would write it like this. We would have a variable, let is admin equal to true, and then an if statement where we're directly comparing the value of is admin to true using the strict equality. Stepping through what would happen here, our current value of is admin is true. So let's replace that with true. We now have true strictly equal to true. The evaluation of that is true because true is equal to true, which means the code block access granted will run. So that's what we've been doing so far. But using truthy and falsy values, we can drastically simplify this. Just popping back what we had originally, is admin strictly equal to true? Using truthy and falsy values, we don't need direct comparison like this. All we need to do is put in is admin, because inside this Boolean context, the value of is admin will be converted to a truthy or falsy value. Now the value of is admin is true, which is a truthy value. Now because the value is true, this code block will run. So truthy and falsy values mean we don't need to directly compare to true or false inside an if statement. We can just evaluate the value directly inside the condition because it is a Boolean context, and no matter what the value is, it will be converted to a true or false, depending on whether it is a truthy or falsy value. So let's check this out in VS Code. All right, so picking up where we left off, what I'm gonna be doing for this demonstration is pasting in three different examples that I have sitting in my clipboard from previous videos that we can update to use truthy and falsy values to avoid us having to write direct comparisons. The first example we did earlier was where we were checking if dark mode was true, and if it was true, we would show dark mode. Now, this is a direct comparison. Dark mode strictly equals true. With our knowledge of truthy and falsy values, we can now remove this and just have if dark mode. The reason this works is because dark mode will be replaced by false because we're evaluating inside a Boolean context, and false is a falsy value, which means this code won't run. All right, putting it back to if dark mode, if this value is true, Inside the Boolean context, dark mode is evaluated to true, which is a truthy value, which means that this code now will run, show dark mode. For the second example, we're checking if a user is logged in, and if they are, we give them a discount of $20, and if they're not, they just get a discount of $10. So inside this condition, I can replace user logged in strictly equal to true, just with user logged in. So what's happening here is that user logged in is converted to true, 
true is a truthy value, which means this code block will run. If I refresh, we get discount of $20. All right, just putting it back to user logged in. If I change this value to false, inside this Boolean context, user logged in becomes false. False is a falsy value. So this code block won't run, which means that this code block inside our else statement will run. So we get a discount of $10. All right, sorry, that should be discount. All right, for our last example that we've seen earlier, we're checking if a user is over the age of 13, if they are a paid user, and if they are a verified user. If all this is true, then access is granted to premium content. If any one of these is false, their access is denied. So using our knowledge of truthy and falsy values, we can update this to just is paid user, and we can update this to just is verified user. So if I refresh, we get access granted to premium content. The reason is, is because is paid user has the value true, is verified user has the value true, this is able to happen because of the power of truthy and falsy values. Where is paid user has the value true, which is a truthy value, so we get back true. Age greater than 13, well this is 20 greater than 13, and this evaluates to true. So all of our statements here are true, which means this code block will run. Just putting it back to what it was. If one of these was false, say is verified user false, this is still true, this is now false, which means that we're gonna get access denied. So truthy and falsy values allow us to write much simpler conditional checks when directly comparing to true or false. Instead of writing is paid user strictly equal to true and is verified user strictly equal to true, we can just use is paid user and is verified user. And truthy and falsy values will convert this to a Boolean true or false inside this Boolean context. So let's now take a look at truthy and falsy values in action. Back in our EasyJet flight booking website, we're gonna be looking at how truthy and falsy values help with the logic to display sold out when there are no more tickets available. The code would look something like this. If not available seats, console.log sold out. So let's say the current value of available seats is equal to 10. Stepping through, we have not 10. Now 10 is a truthy value. So this gets converted to not true. And not true is false, which means that this code block won't run because there are still available seats for passengers to book. Let's now look at the case where available seats is equal to zero. Popping back what we had before, we had not available seats. This is now not zero. Zero is a falsy value. So this gets converted to not false. Not false is true. So because this is true, the code block will execute and we get sold out. So this is a good example of the first use case we looked at earlier where we're using truthy and falsy values to effectively determine the presence or absence of a value. In this case, the presence of a value would be a whole number and the absence of a value is zero. Let's take a look at another example with this cookie message pop-up. Our code would look something like this. If not cookies accepted, console.log display cookies message. Let's first look at the case where we have a variable declared cookies accepted, but it has no value. Inside our condition, we would have not undefined because cookies accepted has no value, so it's undefined. Undefined is a falsy value, so this is the same as not false, and not false is true, which means that the code block will run and we get the cookies message. Let's now say we had let cookies accepted equal to true. Popping back what we had is not cookies accepted. Cookies accepted is a truthy value, so this is not true. Not true is false which means that this code block won't run. Now just popping it back to what we had, this is an example of the second case we looked at where we can avoid writing direct comparisons. Where to achieve this before, we would have had to write not cookies accepted strictly equal to true. So let's wrap up by building a summary card, truthy and falsy values. Let's first summarize the truthy values we saw. They include Boolean true, numbers except zero, like 23, non-empty strings, like my name Daniel, Arrays, which can include empty arrays and objects, which also include empty objects. Now arrays and objects form their own topics later on in this course. So don't worry too much about them now. For the falsy values, we have Boolean false, zero, an empty string, null, undefined, and NAN, not a number. We then looked at the two circumstances we use truthy and falsy values. The first is checking for the presence or absence of a value where we saw the example if a user's email has a value. We also saw it was common to use truthy and falsy values for simpler conditional checks, 
like this one here, where isAdmin strictly equals to true can be replaced with just isAdmin. Because isAdmin will be storing a Boolean true or false value inside this if statement condition, which is a Boolean context, Boolean true is a truthy value and Boolean false is a falsy value. So it can be evaluated immediately inside the if statement condition. So it can be evaluated immediately without needing to directly compare it to true or false inside the condition. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.